Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. So this video is the first video for my, I don't even know what I'm going to call it, travel planning series. Basically I'm going to the UK in September with my boyfriend Mick. I'm pointing there because he's somewhere there in the house. We're going for two months, Mick and I, to the UK. We're leaving on the 4th of September, we're coming back on the 6th. 6th of November I think I'm pretty sure I have been planning a lot because I'm extremely excited as in very excited I have a weird obsession with the UK I've never been to the UK I've always wanted to go to the UK UK I'm saying that a lot and I thought because I'm so obsessed with the planning of the trip and where we're gonna go who we're gonna see how we're going to do all of this I thought I'd share it on my channel and then hopefully help other people. Let's jump into the video. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. I really hope this helps you if you're planning on planning a trip. Hope you like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and let's get started. Notes. Comes prepared. We're gonna start with budgeting. That is gonna be the first video uh, because I think it's a good place to start. That's sort of what's going to be driving this whole trip. It's gonna determine what you can and cannot do. I'm not even sure what order to go in. We're just gonna go and hopefully this will make sense. Fingers crossed it makes sense. Please tell me it makes sense. Before we get started, let me just show you. I have made a Google spreadsheet and basically the sections I covered were leisure, travel, food, accommodation, and then we have total. So we have the total amount and then individually how much it should cost both of us. I know you can't see this properly. That's fine, that's not the point. Those are like the sections that we are budgeting for. I think it's a really good idea that whilst you're, whilst you're planning you create a little spreadsheet so that you can visually see how much you need to spend, how much you need to save, what each amount of money is for, where it's going to, and it also helps you keep track of prices if they increase and decrease with travel um, and things like that. So definitely recommend getting a spreadsheet going, it helps a lot. The beginning of the journey, you're going to start by looking for your flight tickets. Obviously, you want to see how much your flights are going to cost. So I went onto Google, I just typed in Cape Town to Gatwick, I think. We're going to go to Gatwick Airport. Then Google will basically give you, which I didn't know in the beginning, Google actually has all of the flights listed on their system. So you can just go onto Google Flights, I think it's called literally Google Flights, show you the cheapest, the most expensive flights. You put in how many people, so two, two passengers, what are your dates and one way or return. And Mick and I would really prefer to go on Emirates if possible. So I was keeping my eye out for Emirates flights, the cheapest Emirates flights for, for September. Nine months in advance, keep in mind, I was looking at this in January. What you can do, which is very cool on Google Flights, is you can put track flights. You can like select a little button that says track flights. Um, and you put your email address in and they'll email you whenever those flight prices change. So if they increase or if they decrease. The average flight that Mick and I found was eight and a half to nine, but then we found cheaper fl flights for eight, but I'll get there. I was getting very nervous because at one point the flights went up to 11,000 and I was like, okay, I need to start planning and I need to start buying these tickets. End of Feb, beginning of March, we bought our tickets, but we had help from Mick's dad because he has magical ways. He has a website. Where did I write that note? Skyscanner.net and Mamondo.coza. I had budgeted for 17000 for two tickets return on Emirates. The total price we paid was 16 16318 Rand. But our actual flight, 15,808 for two people. So we didn't even pay 16,000 like for just our flight, which was great. So we were very much un um, under budget. And then we ended up paying like service fees and payment fees for if we had to cancel our flight or change our flight, blah, 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 which I mean, it's worth paying for. So I highly suggest you do. Once your tickets are booked, you're gonna need to look at your next steps. So you need to get your visas, um, make sure you have your passport. So that's sort of the admin expenses of things. So I then went on to the internet because the internet is our friends and Google is our friend. And I looked at how much the visas for the UK will cost us. Um, so I have budgeted for that. And then we're also going to France. So we have to then get a, a visa for France. So I had to look at the prices for that. So that's sort of the admin side would just be the visas and passports and things like that. I don't think there's anything else really in admin. So next we're going to focus on food. So food, I was 
very worried about that I was gonna get the budget wrong and I don't really want us to be stranded without food. Bearing in mind we are actually staying with my sister and my brother-in-law for, oh, and my nephew. She's gonna have a baby just, just um, before I get there. But they live in Jersey and also we're gonna go to France with them for a week. That's gonna be great. So we're gonna be very lucky that we're not gonna have to pay for accommodation and we will contribute towards food and stuff but luckily, you know, we'll be living with them for about a month. So from there, I found a website. I'm not gonna link the website because it's gonna be irrelevant by the end of this video. <laughs> In the beginning, I found an average daily spend of I think 45 pounds if my notes are correct. I'll be looking down a lot because I have my notes in front of me and I thought that was a bit excessive but I didn't know anything. Hotels and hostels, that's accommodation, food, water, transport, entertainment and then oh this is from a website I found so it was very cute. They had tips slash handouts so like guides and things like that. They had intercity transport um, which I also included and then scams, robberies, mishaps, things like that. You need an extra um, allowance for that and then alcohol and stuff. Mick and I luckily aren't very big drinkers. We aren't like party animals and stuff so we won't be going out a lot and we don't plan on going out a lot because apparently it's extremely expensive to go out in the UK. So we don't plan on doing that. So what I'd recommend if you can do, so do your research and everything like that, you know accumulate some, some information and then if you know anyone in the UK, if you have friends that have moved to the UK, if family in the UK, if you know people that know people in the UK, and you'll you'll have someone I'm sure get in contact with them arrange like a Skype call or just get their number or something and just start exchanging with them and communicating with them on how accurate research is and getting their input on it because they live there firsthand and they'd be able to give you accurate information I got in contact with an old friend of mine uh, he backpacked around the UK for like a year or two I think I'm not like completely sure but he backpacked for a good while so I knew he was gonna have experience traveling um, in the same place as I wanted to go to. Sent him a message on Instagram and I said, hey, I just want to know if I could chat to you about, you know, your experience backpacking and traveling in the UK with expenses and all those kinds of things. He arranged a little Skype chat with me. He gave me so many notes. I was so appreciative. After speaking to him because he had lived there, backpacked, you know, we don't plan on living the high life when we go and travel. Um, so we sort of came to a conclusion for the daily spend for one person would be 20 pounds. That's less than half than what my re research told me. Is that just for food? I'm not sure. I think that's just for food or accommodation. I'll get there now, but we came to 20 pounds, which is a lot less. It's also good to be like rather safe than sorry. You want to go more than less, that you're not stuck, Just rather that you have extra spending money. <sighs> Goodness, this whole food thing took me a good while. So after deciding 20 pounds, I then went online just to check that it would work. I literally went onto Tesco's website, so wherever you're traveling, go onto a fast, uh, fast food, go onto like a grocery store's website or wherever. And also what my friend told me is generally after 5 p.m., like Tesco's and M&S and all those um, shops in the UK have a lot of sales on their produce that they don't get to sell and they need to get rid of. So a lot of stuff's on sale, which is great. So keep that in mind. I don't know about other places, but apparently they do that in the UK. So what I did is I went onto Tesco's and I looked up ingredients and foods that Mick and I eat quite regularly, regularly, regularly. I literally wrote down the prices for all of these things. It was a bit crazy. This is my food budget list. These are all the foods that Mick and I eat and this is how much they cost according to Tesco. So I looked at breakfast, lunch, dinner and then snacks. If we are going to cook something, I looked at the ingredients for like mac and cheese. I looked at the ingredients for mac and cheese. I looked at the ingredients for like spaghetti bolognese. Sounds like we eat a lot of pasta. <laughs> looked at like their snacks, their pre-made sandwiches, their um, cereals, um, I don't know, all kinds of things like that and I wrote down everything and then I grouped everything into the section. So I have for breakfast 100 Rand, so that's the, so everything that I'm going to talk about from my spreadsheet, that is, includes Mick and I, so it's not for one person, it's for two. For breakfast I worked out 100 Rand, for lunch would be 100 Rand, snacks would be 80 Rand and dinner would be about 150. I actually think that's quite a lot, I don't think... I don't know. So for eight croissants, cheese and butter, that's not even six pounds, okay? And that will last us, so eight croissants, that'll last us about four days. But like, do you see what I mean? We won't be even spending 
that breakfast budget every single day if we buy in bulk per se. So I'd highly suggest if you're looking at food or need to decide on how much food's gonna cost if you're not gonna be eating out and stuff, go and do research. So next up, let's look at accommodation. What I did for accommodation, accommodation can be very expensive. So I did look at hostels. Hostels are quite affordable. If you're traveling with more than one person, I think Airbnb can be affordable as well. Um, but first things first, what I did is I went to, on my Facebook. Use social media, guys. Use your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. So I went on Facebook and I posted about our trip and I told everyone that we were going away in September to November and we'd really appreciate it if anyone knew of accommodation we could use or if we could go and stay with them um, and basically if any family or friends could help us. Wow, people are nice. <laughs> Mick and I have basically got accommodation everywhere. We are very lucky and very fortunate. I know everyone might not be as lucky, but the UK is very popular for people to move to and we do have a lot of contacts there. Um, so we are going all over the place. Our plan is to go, we're going to land in Gatwick, go to France with my sister, we're going to get an Airbnb there with them, then go and stay in Jersey with them for a month. After that we're going to go back to London, stay with um, my sister's friend. Gonna stay there for hopefully a weekish. Everything is like broken up into a week for now, just so that it can all be like roughly estimated. Go to Surrey, go and visit my best friend who's just moved there, go and stay with her for a week. I th am I missing a step? No. And then we're gonna go to Brighton, and Brighton's the only place that we don't have people. Well, I think we do, but not like close family or friends that live there. And I think it would be nice if we just had our own little like place that we don't have to worry about interfering in people's lives and stuff like that. We are looking again at Airbnb in Brighton for a weekish, and then after that we're gonna go up to Ireland and then get an Airbnb for half the time and then the other half of the time we're gonna go and stay with family friends again and then go back to my sister for the last week in Jersey and then go home. So we're only essentially paying I think for two places of accommodation which is very very lucky. Very lucky. Um, I think we budgeted for Brighton like 7,000 for the week, which I think is great. And we've I've found little studio apartments and I don't plan on staying inside at all. I'm not too fussed about where we stay, but it would be nice to just have our own little place. I was previously looking at staying in people's houses, but staying in a room in someone's house, which I didn't mind, but I also felt very invasive by doing that. I upped the budget from that, which was 5,000 for staying in someone's house. And then also sometimes you have to share a bathroom with people and things. This is just like me being super fussy. It's, it's, I'm very lucky to be able to do this. If I wasn't able to, I wouldn't be doing it. So we went from staying in someone's house to a studio apartment flat thing, which is very small, like kitchen, bed, bathroom, that's it. Like very very small and I'm fine with that and mix fine with that. All these places will have Wi-Fi, they'll have like a washer and a dryer and all the things that we'll need so very very cool. If there's more than one person I think look at Airbnb, if it's just one person or if you can't afford Airbnb definitely look at hostels. Um, I think Hostel World is a website you can look at if you want. Um, so go and research some hostels, definitely share on Facebook, Instagram, with family and friends asking if you can go and stay with them for accommodation because that'll save you a lot of money like it's saving Mick and I. So we're very, very lucky and that would be great. Next up, let's do transport. Transport was a very, very big thing for me to sort out. I don't know if you can see that, but that's like a relatively long list, if you ask me. And it took me a good while to find the prices for all of these. So good websites you can look at when you're traveling in the country or if you're going to next door sort of places would be GoEuro, which is now called Omeo, I think. So omeo.com, I think it is. Yeah, omeo.com used to be GoEuro. And then the trailline.com. That's really great for finding some train prices and things like that. So I went for ages online and was looking at train costs from London to Surrey, Surrey to I think Basingstoke, Basingstoke to Brighton, Brighton to Gatwick Airport, and then the flight from Gatwick Airport to Ireland, and then Ireland back to Gatwick, back Gatwick to Jersey, and then Jersey back to Gatwick, and then we have our return flight home. So big. It's a lot of planning. Definitely trail line, trail line? Train line helped me and Go Euro to find what I think would be the cheapest pri prices. A lot of the prices I've put down are estimates, so I don't plan on spending that, that exact amount, but I have an idea of how much we're gonna need. And also what I do, a tip, is I round everything up so that all that little change and stuff that you have like 
you know, rounded up is going to accumulate to some extra money that you'll have on hand, thank goodness. Also, a good tip is to find discount codes. I'm going to try and accumulate some um, discount codes, like I know Zach and Jay, is that his, that's their name? So they worked with the app TrainPal and they had a code which is Zach and Jay on that app, which I think saved them a lot of money on their trip, so I'm gonna hope that that helps us. Also, you can look for Airbnb codes for um, that people are using that you can save some money, so I think you save like 600 Rand on accommodation if you use other people's Airbnb codes, so definitely do some research into that or ask friends and family if they have any discount codes for you. I personally haven't tried it yet, so I can't vouch for it, but I definitely think it's something worth keeping in mind. I think that's all I can say about travel and booking things like that. The next video is going to be about, or one of the future videos in the series is going to be about mapping out your trip, how you know where to go, linking them so that you don't waste money, so you don't take like the long way around, how to take shortcuts and things like that. Have a, in your mind where, where you want to go and then plan it out and then work your route like that and how much that's all going to cost. Let's focus on leisure and fun activities that you want to do when you're there. So Mick and I really want to go, so Mick wants to go to the Emirates Stadium because he loves Arsenal and I really want to go to Madden Tussauds when we're in London. We don't really have other places that we want to go to um, or other activities we want to do in other places that we go visit. So with planning with your activities, I think definitely make a list of all the things you've always wanted to go do or see and things like that, whether it's free or if it costs something, and then go and do the research on how much that's going to cost. So for Emirates Stadium, um, I went online and I looked at how much the Emirates um, Stadium tour tickets cost. So it'll be 841 Rand for Mick and I to go and do the Emirates Stadium tour. And then according to online for Madame Tussauds, it'll, if I book online, it'll cost like 990 Rand for Mick and I to go, which is really expensive. But it is pounds to rands. I've like budgeted for those two. If we can, I'd like to like go on the Brighton i360, I think is what it's called. Not too fast, but we just have those two things that we'd really like to go and, go and do. Once you've got all your stuff like written down and you've done the research on everything and you've really marked the things you'd really, 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 really like to do, like you don't want to leave London without having done that, then I think start researching free things. So start, I've read a lot of articles. I'm not going to like share everything because I am specifically talking about the UK right now. If you're not interested in going to the UK, then it would just be futile for me to talk about it. I think definitely do some research, read some articles some blog posts and things about the free and like secret things that you can do in places that you're visiting so in London there are a lot of free museums a lot of cool little fun activities you can go and take part in that I didn't even know was a thing I think those are the main topics and categories that you're going to need to do research on for budget wise oh also what Mick and I did on our spreadsheet so what we did is you can see two um, rows so there's a blue one and a red one the one is for lower budget and the other is for higher budget so we have a lower budget for like what we'll definitely be able to afford and then the higher budget is with like added extras like we don't have to go stay in brighton for a week but i'd really 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 like to like i'm obsessed with brighton if we can't go stay for a week then we'll go stay for three days or something and we don't have to go see the london like go on the london eye but if we can then that's going to be in a higher budget and stuff like that so i definitely recommend having like a higher and lower budget so you have something to work towards with your higher budget um where you'll be able to do a lot more if you want don't just do the bare minimum, if that makes sense. I mean, do what you want, obviously, but that's just an another tip. With your spreadsheet, you know how much you're gonna have to save in the long run for the end result. So next spreadsheet, because you're gonna need a few, that you're gonna have to plan is how much you're gonna need to save per month. This is tricky, but it is doable. So I've made a little spreadsheet. I first made a note in my notebook, which I've closed again. So I made a table, a table, in my notebook, um, starting in March to August, okay, because we're going to be leaving the beginning of September, so I'm not counting any money I get in the first four days of September, which probably will be nothing. And I basically looked at how much income I know I'm going to get per month, so my salary, and then if I've done part-time work and stuff like that, I'll add that on. But basically you want to, I have a receive, save and keep section. So the receiving is what income I know I'm going to be receiving that month. Put that in there and then how much I need to save of that income. Also another fact to keep in mind, I live at home, I don't have to pay for food or Wi-Fi and stuff like that. 
very lucky. Um, so try and keep it realistic. So say you have like 7,000 Rand, um, you want to try and save 4,000 Rand um, towards your fund and then you have 3,000 Rand left over. So that's going to be your keep section. What I plan on doing is my save section is obviously everything that's going to go towards my expenses for the trip. And then my keep section, I'm also just going to try and save, like slyly <laughs> if I can. Um, but it also will be, that's going to be the money that's going to go towards birthday presents for the month or expenses I didn't see. If there are things that I do need, then I'm obviously going to need money for that. So I'm going to keep a certain amount aside. And then everything I don't spend in that keep section is going to accumulate over the next few months. And I'm hopefully going to have a little bit of money that can then go towards like the coat that I wanted to get or the Polaroid that I wanted to get or something like that. From that, how can you sort of make extra money on the side? So I've been looking at other ways to um, make some extra money and I'll share those with you now. I have a full-time job, so I don't have, obviously I'm not gonna do other work because <laughs> I can't besides my YouTube and stuff. I'm looking at selling a lot of stuff, so stuff I don't need. I'm gonna go to second-hand markets. I'm gonna go to one this, this upcoming weekend. I'm gonna sell a whole bunch of old clothes from my previous video. If you didn't watch, I cleaned out my clothes. So that will definitely help like car boot sales, go and sell things you don't need and that'll give you income that you weren't expecting and then other little jobs like use the skills you have so i just finished my graphic design art direction degree and i'm going like planning on maybe designing some prints to sell to people um some customized prints i did one for a friend recently and i thought it was really cute and i thought that could be an, an interesting way to make a few couple bucks or just do anything maybe i'm i'll start doing people's makeup I don't feel confident about that at all, but maybe I'll do that and I'll get a few a few bucks from that as well. So just try and do like little jobs on the weekends every now and then and that can help you save up a lot of money. I think things to consider is how are you going to pay for things overseas? Do you have a credit card that's going to work overseas? Are you going to just do cash? Um, do you need to get an overseas credit card? Things like that. Luckily I am with APSA and I'm on this, I think I'm still on the student credit card. so. I get, um, I'm allowed to use that credit card when I travel overseas. Also, um, think about travel insurance when you're booking your tickets. So with that same credit card that I booked, I get automatic, like a general travel insurance, which is very, very good. So don't forget about that. Buying supplies. I'm going to call them supplies. So I'm very weird and I'm like, going for two months but I'm acting as if I'm moving there for some reason so I've been looking at like coats and like boots and all kinds of things I'm looking at a lot of stuff and I don't really need that kind of stuff because I'm only going to be there for two months and it'll be a waste of money so I'm trying not to look at things like that but what I would suggest is if you do need some new stuff if you do need some whatever depending on what weather you're going to so if you're going to the UK if you do need a coat if you do need like decent boots um i'd suggest only buying obviously when things are on sale so don't just buy when you see stuff so i've been keeping an eye on stuff that i would like <laughs> i don't necessarily need um but i've been keeping an eye on that kind of stuff and i'm going to only buy it if it ever goes on sale luckily when we're going so we're going in september and that's going to be the start of like summer like warmer months so I think that's when the winter stuff's going to start going on sale so I'm going to only buy so if you can do this do it I'm only going to buy in August the end of August just before we leave because then things will be on sale and hopefully like transitioning from winter to summer and I'll get things for a lot cheaper than I get them now because it's currently winter in South Africa so things will be more expensive for the winter items so yeah if you can keep an eye out for sales and cheaper things but also try not to buy things you don't actually need I'm learning that myself <laughs> um, but yeah I think that's it I've been recording so for maybe 40 45 minutes now Good luck to me when I edit this. I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, please leave a comment down below letting me know, hey, Emmy, thanks so much, it helped me. And if you are planning a trip, if you use these, also let me know if these help you. I'll keep your eye out for the next video, but there will be a few videos coming in this series. I really hope you guys are looking forward to it. Thank you again for watching. Give the video a thumbs up. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, pretty please. And don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Thanks so much guys, I'll see you soon in the next video and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!